Will Wagner, ladies and gentlemen, absolute beauty. Let's break it down. Him versus Davis Schneider. Who had the better start? Yeah, it's only two games, but let's take a look. It's fun anyway. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of, of Locked On Blue Jays is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. I'm Brayden Wasco. He's Carter First. You can find us on Twitter, Brayden 5 Wasco uh, at Carter First 2, as well on Instagram and TikTok at Locked On Blue Jays. As well, if you haven't already, drop a subscription here on YouTube. It really helps us out if you're listening anywhere else. We do appreciate it. You guys have been killing it everywhere lately. But we have noticed a lot of you guys aren't subscribed that watch our podcasts, our shorts, our videos, whatever. Make sure you hit that. Um, it really helps us out. It keeps us at the top of your guys' page. Plus, hit that little bell notif- notification thing, little icon uh, on the side of YouTube. It'll give you guys notifications whenever our videos come out and uh, in case we go live and stuff like that. So it's there for you guys to use. Also. Let us know. We got a sort of a fun comment here uh, asking us possibly to start a Discord server where we can get all of the Locked On Blue Jays uh, fans, Blue Jays fans sort of in general together. You can talk during the game. You can talk to us. We can sort of go back and forth in the Discord. Might start some cool conversations. Let us know if you guys would like that. It's it's an easy download, and then you just uh, can click the link. And you'd be able to join. I might set that up uh, tomorrow or the next day. So pro- look out for that next week. And we might uh, get that so- set up and started for you guys. And if we find anything really interesting, maybe, you know, we do a segment on like Discord conversations or something like that. I don't know. We could have fun with it. It's it's sort of a cool idea. And it doesn't, you know, then you don't have to reach out on Twitter or whatever else that, you know, half the people don't use. Discord's an easy one. You can use it specifically for that reason. Um but in saying that, Carter, I don't know, that that covers all my um, sort of bookkeeping, housekeeping stuff, whatever you want to say. Um, Will Wagner, an absolutely great day again from the kid. Uh, and, and we'll do get into the full game breakdown sort of in the third segment. But, uh, you know, I just figured I'd go over his line really quickly. An absolutely fantastic day. Two for four, two RBIs uh, with a strikeout. He is just killing it. Four total bases today. He's batting a 625 with a 625 on base percentage and his a slugging of 1,000. The kid is killing it, Carter. Absolutely killing it. There's nothing bad that I can say with him. Even on the at-bats that he doesn't uh, you know, get a hit on, they're competitive at-bats. He's hitting the ball hard. And uh, it's just it's really, really fun to watch right now. Yeah, you look at Will Wegner's stats, and uh, he's doing pretty well through his uh, first two games. If he has this on a big enough stretch where he can have, I mean, 4,000 at-bats, he's going to be set up to be the best player in MLB history. He's going to have the best OPS, going to have the best average, going to have just the best everything, best slugging, best on, on base. But realistically, I mean, great start for Will Wegner. You like seeing his, uh, his outs being loud as well. Like you said, he had a line out. I believe it was to center field today. Absolutely hammered the ball. Same thing in his first game. Line outs. Again, you don't love line outs, but you don't hate them. They're good at bats. And that's what we want Will Wagner to have. We want him to have good at bats. But saying that, uh, his first inning at bat was one that I was really impressed with. Again, coming up in a big spot, having a two RBI double, just hammering a ball again. This guy's just lining the ball all over the place. And that's why I kind of compared him a little bit to Spencer Horowitz as he was going up. Not necessarily having the most amount of power you've ever seen, but again, you look at Spencer Horowitz, he has shown flash, flashes of that power. But we're talking about Will Wagner. These two both barrel off the baseball at, at an astonishing rate, and that's what you would like to see. You like to see them smack the ball all over the diamond, hit the ball hard, because when you hit the ball hard, that is your best opportunity to get hits and get them at a plethora, and you've seen that for with Will Wagner through his first two games. There's been five Toronto Blue Jays that have five hits in the first two MLB games, David Schneider being one of them doing it last year. And then Will Wagner becoming the fifth player uh, after today's game. Has two for two at-bats and two hits. you love to see it. Uh, that's, again, the next two at-bats. Doesn't get hits, but two for four. Still going to be a very good day. Nothing to complain about with Will Wagner. But there is uh, some strikingly similar comparisons. Again, it is only two games, so maybe we're jumping the gun a little bit here. 
But it's fun to speculate. It's fun to uh, get excited about young prospects. And uh, Will Wagner start. Who does he remind you of, Braden? Because I know it's some guy that you are decently familiar with on uh, this Toronto Blue Jays squad. Yeah, it is the guy, a guy that I have two jerseys of that I've spent way too much money purchasing already this season, and that's Davis Schneider. Now, don't get me wrong, Davis Schneider on a bit, not a bit, a long cold streak here. Hopefully, he's looking to bounce back in the rest of this season and into 2025. It might be just a case that this season's not ending up the best for him, sort of like the end of last year, needing that offseason to bounce back and develop. I mean, he's still a young guy, still lots of time to develop here. Um, but yeah, he, he he does. He he the start that he's on really does remind me of David Schneider. This this sort of guy that you know the hopes weren't necessarily through the roof on. You were just sort of seeing what they could put out there. And the difference is is that Will Wagner has only been with the Toronto Blue Jays for two two and a half weeks here, um, and David Schneider obviously came up through the organization. So it it is a different scenario. We got to see a lot more of David Schneider through AAA and everything like that. And then, you know, that pushed him to make his major league debut. Whereas Will Wagner, I think it's a, you know, it's, it's a more of a necessity thing, giving guys looks, um, get, you know, wanting to play different pieces. And you give Will Wagner a shot, a guy who is very good in AAA. Um, and he comes up and he's hitting like an absolute beast. And don't get me wrong. I do understand that this is also against the Los Angeles angels. So take that with what you will. But I, you're still having to hit against major league pitchers that you haven't done before. So big hat tip to him. But uh, Carter, I just have one stat here I want to get into just before I sort of throw it back to you. Uh, in, in Will Wagner's first game, the double off of his bat was 104.5 miles an hour. The single was 99.1 miles an hour. And his, this third single or the second single, third hit was 105.9 miles an hour off the bat. He is hitting the baseball so hard. And it's it is weird to see because you're like, is he just going to hit every baseball hard? Like I said, even on some of the outs he got t- uh, yesterday, Carter, they were hit hard. And and I you know, think back to when David Schneider came into the league, that's sort of how he was hitting the baseball as well. Yes, he'd get his singles and, and whatever, but the guy was hitting a lot of home runs, a lot of deep balls. He was hitting very, very hard. Um, and, and it's they have very different approaches. When I look at David Schneider, it's a it's just a powerful swing. It is all or nothing every time for David Schneider. There is no two-strike swing. It is hard all the time. Now, when I look at Will Wagner's swing and watch him shorten up his um, swing with two strikes, he still hits it hard, but he does shorten up. It becomes a little bit less of that leg kick. It's more of a, just a toe tap. Um, and he, But just the way he turns on the baseball and, and sort of accelerates through is he dry, he just is able to just punch that baseball and it looks so good it's such a clean swing um yeah i could go on and on about will wagner and 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 david schneider these are two guys that i've uh david schneider obviously my favorite player um still still right now um and will wagner is just a very very exciting young prospect yeah you go there's a lot of similarities to david schneider will wagner obviously a lot of differences i guess i'll start with the similarities here both of them started their uh, first series five for eight in the first two games. We'll definitely take that. Um, David Schneider raking up until that point, a guy that is a little bit lo- more lost in the system, you want to say, because he made his way through the system very quickly and AAA was absolutely raking, was uh, hitting over 300, had 21 home runs in 85 games. Again, Will Wagner being a little bit different in the aspect where he's not hitting the ball as hard, but in similarities here, again, uh, David Schneider's OPS was around 800 in this majority of his career in the minor leagues. Will Wagner, the exact same thing. Looking at this year, it's around 850 in the minor leagues. So both these players are very hot in the minor leagues coming up into the MLB. And you look, and it's been, again, for David Schneider, was sustained success for a very long time. Now you're looking at Will Wagner. Two games, hard to speculate right now, but there is a lot of similarities in their game. They're both hitting the ball very hard. They're having great at-bats. They're seeing a lot of pitches. They're not swinging at pitches outside of the strike zone. So in totality, they're just having good major league at-bats. They're having like Vladimir Groh, junior caliber at-bats. Uh, they just It's veteran at-bats almost, it seems like, from Will Wagner right now, which is very good to see at his young age. But kind of going into some of the differences, looking at Will Wagner and David Schneider. Obviously, David Schneider has said the 21 home runs in 85 games. Will Wagner, not going to be touching that. Uh, if you can get probably 10 to 15 home runs in a season from Will Wagner, 
probably going to be better off for you. David Schneider, more of a power bat, a guy that's not going to hit for average, but is going to drive the ball in the gaps, is going to hit home runs where you got Will Wagner, more of an average hitter, more of an on-base guy. Going to hit the ball hard, but he's not going to hit the ball necessarily a long way. We'll find gaps from time to time with his smooth swing. But overall, not much of a power hitter. Uh, you look at both of them. Will Wagner slated as a third baseman, but played second baseman in both of his two games. David Schneider was playing second base, a lot of second base last season. Got moved to third once in a while. Shortstop the odd time, and now is playing a lot of outfield. And you look at David Schneider compared to Will Wagner defensively. Again, very small sample size. I have seen Will Wagner play defense a little bit in AAA as well. Again, difference being there again. David Schneider didn't really hear much about him whatsoever until you're like, who is this guy raking in AAA? Will Wagner being one of those guys that has been more of a highly touted prospect, not one that's a top 10 necessarily, but a guy you've heard of because of his dad being Billy Wagner. But going back defensively, Will Wagner does look a lot more smooth, I will say, than David Schneider does. He made a very good play yesterday. Um, with It was from Dalton Varshow. Uh, I guess, I can't remember who it was, but somebody fell at second base. Just a nice tag by Will Wagner, an even better throw by Dalton Varshow. But uh, he's snagging hard balls. He's looking at hard hit balls, and he's looking them right into the glove, looking very composed at second base. And maybe that is because he's playing third base. Obviously, that second base throw is a lot easier for Will Wagner than throwing it across the diamond. But he looks a lot more fluid, looks a lot more comfortable at second base than David Schneider did earlier in his career. Again, there's a ton of speculation here because he is two games into his major league career. And again, this is the Los Angeles Angels with back-to-back -back pitchers over a five ERA. Tyler Anderson will be starting in this game. So that will be uh, an interesting one to see if he can have a better at bat against a more improved, more sustainable pitcher this season rather than uh, some of the guys he's faced so far. But you can't complain about uh, a 5 for eight performance from Will Wagner and great and very great defensive play through his first two games as an MLB starter. Yeah, Carter. And you know what? We, we sort of did the, the uh, Will Wagner comparison to David Schneider and you know what? We are going to have a bigger conversation on David Schneider, most likely, um, hopefully Friday, possibly Monday. We'll sort of, you know, roll with the punches when he gets back into the lineup and when we can see a little bit more from him uh, as of late. But in saying that, there's a lot of Jays news as well, uh, sort of circulating around. Just a cool, a couple cool things that we found that we want to pass on to you guys. So we'll do that in the second segment and third segment. We'll do a bit of a game recap and look ahead to the final game against the Los Angeles Angels. Carter, do you have anything else before we sort of uh, get this quick break here? Uh, no, just a positive start from Will Wagner. I mean, I mean he's going to have to do it in more at-bats. Obviously, David Schneider had the highest OPS throughout his 20, first 25 games, which will amount for about 100 total at-bats. Will Wagner's at eight, so he's got a long way to go for that. But uh, it's definitely fun to get these comparisons out for uh, one of the best starts as a rookie in MLB history. Will Wagner can even sniff that David Schneider's production for this last little bit of the season. I think all Toronto Blue Jays fans are going to be impressed. But you're right, we do have a lot of Blue Jays news and storylines to cover. Some, some stuff that we just haven't simply had time for. Some stuff that is very interesting come out recently, so you're going to want to stick around for that. But we are going to take a short break and get to, that with, get to you all that information coming up after this little break here. Today's episode of Locked on Blue Jays brought to you by Liquid IV. When I tell you guys that I don't need, I need this in me ASAP. Liquid IV is my saving grace most of the time. It is the perfect hydration drink. It's the perfect balance of electrolytes, nutrients. It's, it's just perfect. There's a lot of days that, you know, we're out on the golf course. We're out playing softball. It's perfect. This is the drink that I want to have. It's an easy little tear. You just rip it open. You tear. You throw it in a thing of water and you're good to go you're all set it, it i can't even tell you guys how many times this this has brought me back to life the sundays goodness you might as well call them liquid iv days at this point because i need them every single weekend powered by live hydrosense an optimized ratio of electrolytes essential vitamins and clinically tested nutrients that turn ordinary water into extraordinary hydration. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code MLB at liquidiv.com. Today's episode is also sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play a fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you can pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is very simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entries in as little as 60 seconds. So obviously, I'm a big fantasy guy, especially NFL fantasy. That's going to be coming up soon. But until that does start, and while the Blue Jays season is going on, I'm probably going to be hammering 
a lot of picks on the Toronto Blue Jays. So for today's game, obviously Tyler Anderson is pitching, so it's going to be a little bit more of a pressure start for the Blue Jays. Not as easy of an opponent as they have had the last couple of games. So unfortunately, just based on trends this year, I am going to go less than for bases on George Springer and Dalton Varsho, but I am going to go more on extra base hits at 0.5 for Vladimir Guerrero Jr., if I can get any Will Wagner more than, it's definitely going to hammer that as well. Again, you don't want it to be a three and a half more than bases, but if you can get something that one and a half, 0.5 bases, I'm definitely going to hammer that. If you know which players are going to perform on specific nights, this is a no brainer. Download prize picks to start making your picks today. You can download the app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. It's code locked on MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. So, welcome back. We have some a lot of Blue Jays news to cover. A lot of it has come out. Um, but in saying that, before we sort of hop into that, I want to say we just got another mailbag question that has come in. Uh, so we'll be making sure we answer that. It was a very, very interesting one. And so I think we're going to answer that on Friday's episode. I want to say, Carter, Friday. Is that right? That we were Yeah, it sounds to right to me. All right. We'll do that Friday. It's, it's a very interesting topic and we can't wait. We love when you guys send us these mailbag segments because sometimes they spark an idea within us that we sort of carry through, um, through the show or through the episode. So if you guys have a comment that you want us to read on the show or an idea or a concept, make sure you guys drop it in, just tag it mailbag and then list your comment or question or whatever. And we'll make sure we get to that. Uh, Justin Powers, our roommate, had a, had a really good first one, and we'll get to this second one on Friday. It is a very interesting question, and we'll make sure to get to that. But, Carter, in saying that, we have a lot of sort of Blue Jays news to cover. Just the the one thing I want to start with, with all of these uh, draft picks, prospects, the top 10 list for the Toronto Blue Jays pipeline has been revealed. Um, and there's been a little bit of a shakeup, and I think in doing that, w- again, we'll dive a little bit deeper into this, probably in the offseason when we can really, you know, take our focus onto the pipeline. But starting it off here at number one, Arelvis Martinez. Two, this is a, a new guy here. So number one last time was Ricky Tiedemann. Number two now is Trey Savage has moved up into that spot after the draft. Jake Bloss stays at number three, which is very interesting. And Ricky Tiedemann drops to number four. Uh, Namala, number five. Leo Amenez is number six. Jonathan Klasse Klos, is number seven. Uh, Cal Steven is eight. Charles McAdoo, nine. And uh, Adam Mako is uh, number 10. So just sort of an interesting look at the top 10 prospects there as they were sort of reassembled uh, from the last time we talked about this at the trade deadline. So very interesting look there. Um, and just sort of moving forward, Carter, uh, is there anything specific that uh, that you have to say on the pipeline, or do you want to sort of save that for the big pipeline episode? Uh, the only thing I'm going to say about that is that's five players that the Toronto Blue Jays got either in the draft or at this trade deadline that are in the top 10. Uh, I, I don't know how to feel about that. Again, I'm going to just kind of leave it at that. Uh, that either means Tron- the Toronto Blue Jays had the greatest trade deadline and draft of all time, or that just means that the Toronto Blue Jays prospect system was one of the worst in all of baseball. So, I mean, you guys can sit with that thought for a little bit. We're definitely going to get more into this probably uh, throughout the season as well as obviously in uh, the offseason. We'll probably take uh, bigger deep dives into some of these prospects. But other than that, uh, just there's prospects raking the Blue Jays uh, major league team right now as well. So the fact that uh, a lot of these new guys are coming in, showing that uh, they do have some future sustainability is uh, a nice thing to see for a prospect system that, hasn't been the greatest of all time uh, recently. Yeah, and I'll save some of my thoughts on that as well, just sort of moving forward, because I think on, depending on each prospect that you look at, I, I have a little bit of a different feeling towards. But I think as an overall, it's nice to see the sh- switch up. I think even with the Ricky Tiedemann stuff, we'll, we'll get into that more as well. But uh, he's he's pretty injury prone, and, it, and he's, you know, I hate to say this, it looks like he's made a glass. So we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, Carter, uh, any news coming from you? Uh, For me, I just have the interesting thing kind of from Will Wagner in his first debut game. Obviously, we have been talking a lot about Will Wagner recently, but he's been, again, for for Blue Jays season, that's been overall disappointing to have a young star, a young prospect, I guess you could say, maybe we can't say young star quite yet, but a guy that so far throughout his first two games is developing to look like a star. Again, you want a bigger sample size, but we're going to be talking about this guy a lot because when the Toronto Blue Jays are a million games under 500, Tough to find uh, some positive things to talk about. But uh, we're going into Will Wagner. Um, he was obviously just very busy with the media. You know, first game, making your MLB debut after a trade deadline. That the Toronto Blue Jays say that this was probably the best trade of trade deadline, the one that Will Wagner was being a part of. 
But he got a little bit distracted, it seemed like, and didn't necessarily set up his family with the tickets that they needed to see him in his debut. So he said his uh, fiance and his dad, which is Billy Wagner, texted him, hey, we still can't get in. And he was like, oh, oh, gosh, I forgot to get the tickets. So he just going into saying, uh, Will Wagner was so busy with the media prep for his game. He almost, for his family, almost missed the first pitch. And just one of those things, I guess, yeah, so busy. Obviously, you're thinking about it. You want your family to see you in your first major league game, obviously. But the amount of questions that uh, the Toronto Blue Jays media seem, media seem to have for Will Wagner uh, got his mind off it for at least a little bit and probably took up a lot of his time, even maybe some of his pregame routine time, because when you're a prospect, when there's not a lot of good things going on in Toronto Blue Jays land, people want to know about you. So we obviously got bombarded with questions. But uh, a little funny story uh, from especially one of the greats in being Billy Wagner. Uh, possibly missing either the first pitch or he's obviously in the first half bat, but maybe just barely uh, missing his first game with the Toronto Blue Jays, unfortunately at the door. Yeah. You, you know, when, when you get called up uh, to, to the major league level here, it, it is such a whirlwind because you're, you are pretty much hopping on a plane and getting down uh, to the ballpark. And then it's, you know, trying to uh, sort of get into the routine, get into the system and, you know, it, it probably is a lot, especially for a young kid coming up. I mean, it's 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 a lot of responsibility as it is. And and then to have a couple extra things on your plate, it's probably not the top of mind. Uh, so so sort of funny there. That was a good story. I heard that as well. Um, and, and it's just it's just great. It, it's great to see, you know, uh, Billy Wagner up in the stands with with the uh, with the phone out trying to record uh, his son's hits. It's it's sort of hilarious, right? It, it brings you back to when uh, either you were a kid or, or a parent of your kid and, and you're watching your kid play like T-ball for the first time, right? Uh, it, much, much different situation, obviously. But, uh, you know, maybe we can all dream at some point. Um, but sort of cool there, Carter. Here, I got um, uh, a couple of more things to say. I just kind of just some hypothetical, hypotheticals, just kind of throwing ideas out there uh, on the Will Wagner topic. You would think that for being a guy in the MLB, somebody would be able to probably take care of your family for uh, your major league debut. You wouldn't think that that would necessarily be on the player. Or maybe you thought if it was on the player, you might get that done when you have time, maybe on the plane, maybe before you get to the stadium. Because again, like he's not the first prospect of all time to come up for the Toronto Blue Jays. You got to think that some of these prospects, just looking at David Schneider last year, how involved the media was with this guy. You think that that might have been taken care of by somebody in Toronto Blue Jays media, because I know for a fact if somehow I made the MLB, which obviously did not happen, that's why I'm talking to you about the Toronto Blue Jays on this <laughs> podcast, but if my parents were at the stadium and I did not have their tickets available, for, especially for the first pitch of my uh, Major League debut, I probably would get some uh, some interesting text from them, and they might have some interesting things to say, maybe about the Toronto Blue Jays staff, whoever is supposed to be set up for uh, these tickets, because uh, obviously they'd want to see me play, and they wouldn't want to miss any time, but it's just... it's. Funny to me that this wasn't taken care of before uh, Will Wagner was busy with the media. Yeah, you'd think they'd have a guy, right? Like I know being around the Winnipeg Jets system, they have people that do that for the players when they're called up uh, in, in, you know, when their family comes out to games. I know when they did um, in the NHL, they do like a, like a dad's night or, a, or a, a mom's night where they all come out. All that gets taken care of for them, right? They, they get a sweep, they get this, they get this, and it's all set up. So it's a little bit shocking to hear that Will Wagner, this sort of responsibility is put on him. Not again, that it's the most crazy thing of all time to have to do, but with a million things going on in your head, it's it's a little bit of an interesting conversation to have at least, right? And you're thinking, it, why is that the thing that's in your head right before you're about to get on the field for your first major league game is, is just beyond me. Um, but but sort of a cool story, Carter. I, it, was, it was fun to hear about it at least to think, you know, just to get a little bit of a peek behind the curtain, I guess. Well, it clearly didn't affect him. The guy goes three for four in his first major league game. And in the second game, he learns the, the Blue Jays hit celebration. So he's slowly getting his feet wet, uh, learning the Toronto Blue Jays way. Hopefully it doesn't take away uh, too much from some of the struggling players here. But again, you got a lot of good guys to look at on this team as well. Spencer Horwitz raking, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., obviously one of the best hitters since the All-Star break. So a lot of good guys to learn from. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw an interesting tidbit about that in there. Brayden, you got any other Toronto Blue Jays news that you want to go over before uh, we do head into this game? You know what? I, I got some other stuff, but but it's a little bit more of a conversational piece, and we need, I think, a little bit more time. So I might save that for the Thursday and Friday moving forward as, uh, you know, we will have a little bit more time, hopefully, obviously, with the off day coming up. Um, so so I'll save it for then and I because I think it'll spark a little bit of conversation between uh, myself and uh, and you, Carter. So let's hit this quick break. 
Uh, again, I just want to mention, we appreciate everything that you guys do listening to our podcast, making it the first listen every day. If you want to find a second lesson, make sure you check out Locked On MLB host Paul Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully. Uh, he's our guy. He is just – he he knows exactly how to do this. He knows how to run a show. This guy is a fantastic listen. He brings humor. He's just – he's a hilarious dude. It, honestly, if you check him out, you're going to see for yourself. Uh, great tidbits on the MLB. Just a great, great conversationalist as well, starting conversations within other hosts like ourselves. Um so make sure you check that out at Locked On MLB on YouTube. Um, you can find it everywhere you listen to podcasts as well. Uh, we'll hit this quick break. We'll be right back with the game recap and a little bit of a look forward to the final game of this series. Spring has sprung, and that means spring cleaning. Whether that means stocking up on cleaning supplies or swapping out your winter clothes for new spring clothes, make sure you're getting Ibotta and get real cash back with every purchase. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, buy that flight you've been eyeing, that Toronto Blue Jays game you've been dying to go to, or that fancy dinner you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much, but with Ibotta, just add your offers in the app, Upload your receipt and you get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, and gift cards. Join the over 50, 50 million savers that earn cash every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 for free just for uh, trying Ibotta and using code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. You can take care of all your vehicular maintenance needs with our partner, eBay Motors. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your vehicle, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Whether it's a new spoiler, new brakes, a new alternator, or you just want to deck out your ride, eBay Motors will have everything you need. They're super easy to deal with. The experts are very knowledgeable, and they give great advice that is specific to your needs. So to keep your ride or die alive, you can go to ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available for U.S. customers. So, Carter, of course, we have a game to sort of break down here a little bit. I mean, again, it was nice to see, you know, the Blue Jays be able to pull out another win, 6-1 to one against uh, the Angels here. Uh, Kevin Gosman, an absolute electric start, uh, of course, going seven innings, six hits give, uh, given up, no runs, five Ks, two walks. And, of course, we've talked about Will Wagner enough, I think. I don't necessarily know if we have to do a deep dive into that. Um, just going over a couple other guys here. Uh, George Springer. This is what this is the big one I wanted to touch on because it was sort of an insane play that with the video replay system, you would hope that MLB would be able – and, again, didn't really end up affecting the outcome of this game. Probably wasn't going to in the long uh, in the long run here. But at the end of the day, if this was a play in the World Series that the at, that the video replay system gets wrong, he gets hit by that pitch, and they call it no. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. I don't know, Carter. It just sort of it just sort of aggravates me, right? He gets tossed as well. I don't know from from your perspective. I mean, we both saw it. We both thought it hit him. I mean, is this a video replay system? Is this the ump ma having to be able to make that call? I mean, at the end of the day, if the video replay system isn't going to work to its intended um, usage, I don't know what the point is at, at the end of the day. Yeah, see, I don't know if the, the replay booth has more angles than what we saw on the broadcast. Because obviously right away when that happened for us, we're like, okay, yeah, hit him. Free base for George Springer, hit him in the toe. It looked like he was fine. So we're like, perfect. That just uh, we will take free base runners any day of the week. But obviously, um, I believe it was Martinez who was the ump. Uh, did not call it right away, but they did get the uh, the challenge for George Springer. Again, looked fairly obvious to us when they were doing the, the replay. Because even with some of the replays that we got uh, during the broadcast, it looked like the catcher's glove was going even more left into the right-handed batter's box, which in turn would mean 
the, the ball hit George Springer's foot and then bounced off right because he didn't get even get the glove on the ball. So, again, the replay system obviously missed that one, or maybe our eyes are just deceiving us because it looks very, fairly obvious to us. George Springer, obviously not happy, has to uh, get, goes into a 2-2 count rather than getting a uh, free base as, as a result. And he's sort of walking away, just going to, like, again, chirping at him a little bit, but didn't seem like from the lip reading we got anything too crazy. And then as he was walking away, uh, he kicks him out, and that's when George Springer absolutely explodes. I don't remember a time that George Springer looked more upset at an umpire than that. Then John Schneider, we got a pretty good lip, lip reading off of that that we can't necessarily say on this podcast. We want to go back and look at it. Uh, definitely interesting there. And then uh, credit to Vladdy for just kind of getting in there right away and pretty much just holding back George Springer because it did look like he was going to get very upset. But overall, it's definitely fair. Again, you look at the Toronto Blue Jays season, maybe you're like, why are you getting so upset when you're eight, nine games under 500, whatever it is. But these players still want to compete. They still want to battle for their individual stats for their team. And you like seeing George Springer being fired up in a situation where he got done wrong. So I think in this situation, you can't blame George Springer whatsoever. Maybe you want to see John Schneider get kicked out as well, just so you can have the back uh, of his players. Just uh, unfortunately a bad call for George Springer. But again, I can't really fault him for being passionate about the game of baseball. No, absolutely. I love it, Carter. I, I mean, again, when something like this happens, I, I, I will never I will never endorse yelling at umpires. Uh, you know, if you're a fan, whatever, in in you know in the mind you know if, if you're watching kids ball please do not yell at umpires and lose your mind but if you're a player there's going to be sometimes where you have disagreements and I think it shows a little bit of heart for the game and I, and I love when players show a little bit of heart get frustrated get a little upset um, or get excited in, in the reverse right um, so George Springer I, I, I really I, I understand the frustration after a hard season um, Vladdy boxing him out very smart, I think, because if George Springer would have continued, there might have been a fine in place for George Springer. Suspension, maybe even suspension, if they something. Them. There's a bunch of things that could happen. So I, I agree as well with that bloody point. Yeah, good good on Vlad for getting in there, making sure you know that you, you don't lose George for any more games or he doesn't uh, secure a fine or anything like that. Uh, John Schneider, I think I would have liked to see him get tossed in this situation. I always say that have your players back, get a little, you know, get a little, you know, animated, get involved. Um, but I think it wasn't the worst thing. He got out there right away. He got right off the bench. Um, so at the end of the day, I think I'm okay with it. Uh, I think he did a good job. I think he sort of calmed the situation down as well a little bit. So uh, I, I'm going to give John Schneider good job on this one. I think he got out there right away. He, he got in the ump's face. He let Vlad secure George Springer. I think it was the right way to handle this situation with George being that bad. I think what could have been interesting, obviously this would not have been deserving whatsoever, but uh, if Vladimir Guerrero Jr. comes in and maybe just does a drop kick to Logan O'Hoppy, let's just get something excited with the Toronto Blue Jays here. we got Will Wagner. Let's go for a full-out bench brawl. We haven't seen one of those all year for the Toronto Blue Jays. So it would have been cool to see just uh, two teams going at it. Obviously, there would have been a lot of suspensions, but would have been a moment to remember in the Toronto Blue Jays season. So it would have been awesome to see. Obviously, it did not, did not happen. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was using in his head, in fact, so I guess credit to him, but uh, unfortunate L for us as we didn't get to see a bench brawl. But uh, other than that, going into this game, Kevin Gosman had another great start. Again, it is against the Los Angeles Angels lineup. Isn't the greatest lineup in all of baseball. I'll be the first one to say that. But seven innings pitch, six hits given up, five Ks, two walks, dropping his ERA down to 420, a whip of 126, and no earned runs. It was the biggest thing in a baseball game. I always say with the pitchers, especially the bullpen arms, especially the starters. I guess mostly for me, the bullpen arms. But if you don't allow any runs, the other team cannot win the baseball game, believe it or not. So uh, a, a great uh, start from Kevin Gosman. Splitter looked really good again today. The stuff was really there today. Commandy at times he had issues with, but worked out of it. Only had two walks on the day. Obviously not giving up any earned runs, like I said before. Not going to complain about Kevin Gosman, and I'll say this before, and I'll say it again. When you're looking at Kevin Gosman, you're looking at Jose Brios, they might have a hiccup here and there, but you have seen what Kevin Gosman has done throughout his entire career with the Toronto Blue Jays. Even years before the Toronto Blue Jays, not having his greatest year of baseball, the things that he can work on has had a couple of bounce back starts in a row here. Definitely not worried about Kevin Gosman for next season whatsoever, and congrats to him on a good start against the Los Angeles Angels. Yeah, I agree. And and we we hammer this point to everybody all the time that I, I'm not worried about Kevin. Gosman. I'm not worried about this rotation whatsoever. It, it, it's more so the bullpen. Uh, Eric Swanson does give up a run today uh, for the first time in, in a while. Um, first time, maybe since he's, since, oh no, he got, uh, no, he did get, give up a one run uh, in yeah. his first or second start. But first time yeah. since then, it's his first time, I believe six innings or six appearances. It's pretty good for Eric Swanson, especially uh, after the 
uh, just a crazy start that he had. I was yeah. going to say impossible, but obviously it did happen. But just uh, Allegra, irregular start. Just didn't expect that uh, from Eric Swanson, but nice that uh, he has had a bounce back uh, a couple weeks so far. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I I really like what I've seen from Eric Swanson so far, uh, sort of since he's returned to this Toronto Blue Jays lineup. So good on him. He's he's doing what he needs to do. Um, besides that, it was a good game. It's a fun watch. It's it's fun watching the Toronto Blue Jays win games. It worked out for us. We had a ga- uh, baseball game uh, this uh, this uh, yesterday night, and we got off just in time out of the diamond because we mercyed the team. Um, little shout out to us there. Um, and then we got up just in time where uh, Carter was driving back. I had through the uh, the game on the radio. I was watching. Carter was, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, he wasn't peering. He wasn't peering over. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna incriminate Carter here. But you know, we were watching the game to say the least. And we got back by I think what 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 was it by the second inning? Like it was. I think crazy. it was bottom two by the time we got back. And our game was at seven o'clock. So I guess that's the good thing. That's seven o'clock our time. Uh, again, yeah. we're a little bit different than Toronto time. But we had about an hour and 38 minutes to complete our baseball game, get in the car and get back home. And we did, like, I think we got halfway home for an hour drive for us. So the game only took about an hour and five minutes or something like that, which was absolutely insane. But uh, obviously watching Will Wagner's at-bats maybe inspired me a little bit because I was going through a little bit of a David Schneider streak. But four for five, my only out was a line out. Uh, so hopefully something that I can take into the playoffs, hopefully something that Will Wagner can continue to do. So I'm going to say it right now on this podcast, I'm going to bring it out there. If Will Wagner can continue to be hot for the next couple of weeks, I will also continue to be hot. So I need Will Wagner to be good so I can be good for the playoffs. I like it. We got uh, playoffs coming up in – for us, what is it? Not Week this half, weekend, oh, next week weekend. Yeah. Yeah, so it should be good. We, we play on a mixed team and a men's team. Um, we've, we've won the mixed league two years in a row now, so we're hoping to do that again. We play the team, I believe, in the first round who we beat in the finals two years in a row. Uh, or yeah, one year in a row, but they probably should have been in the final year before that. Uh, very good team. We did merge them the last time we played them. So it should be very, very interesting. It's always interesting against them. Um, we're excited. We're, we're ready to play baseball. So the golf weekend has passed and now it's full in on uh, slow pitch for us. We, I think we're going to go hit the diamonds out here in the city. Um, you know, just work, just work on the hits, get to get them uh, under control here. Uh, I think I finally dialed mine in with a little bit more consistent baseball. I, I the start of the season, I was playing once every two, once every three weeks. It just wasn't going well with with my work schedule, everything like that. So and now that I've gotten some consistent playing time here, uh, we're back. The boys are looking good. Uh, I think everybody goes into playoffs on a little bit of a hot streak, which we which we like. So we'll have to see what happens. We'll keep you guys updated as well on how we do in that playoffs. But at the end of the day, we appreciate all you guys listening. Uh, it's been an absolute blast. And just uh, making sure you guys tune in to the game tomorrow and then into the podcast after that. We have some uh, some cool segments coming up in the next few days into next week. So, uh, yeah, again, mailbag, if you are still here, uh, send us a message, send us a question. We'll go over it on one of the episodes. We really, really want to start doing mailbags, get some questions and, and sort of thought, thought processes from you guys that we can carry over and, and have a discussion around. Uh, make sure you guys check out Locks on MLB host Paul Sullivan. Uh, Sully, just fantastic show. He he really he really is the best. So go check out that channel, uh, Locked on MLB. Uh, Carter, anything else before we sort of get out of here? Yeah, I got two more things. Uh, just like you in your slow pitch career is the same thing for our Toronto Blue Jays prospects. Toronto Blue Jays players in general, if you're not playing a lot of games, if you're not playing a lot of times during the week, it's kind of hard to get in a rhythm. It's kind of hard to be fluid and be consistent at the plate. So you want your players to be playing every single day, and that's what Braden's starting to do, and he's starting to figure it out. So it's not just a random thing that occurs. It's actually something that is backed up by a little bit of just reasoning, just being logical. Obviously, you know, you do something enough times, you're probably going to get better at it. And the other thing is, before we did head out, didn't want to go through this podcast without saying back-to-back moon balls by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Spencer Horwitz. These two have been my some of my favorite players to watch this season, debatably, honestly, top two for uh, how consistent they have been. Just uh, great things to see by two guys that are, are probably going to be core pieces of your team going into next season. Yeah, they're, they're exciting guys to watch, and, and, and you were right. They're the two most exciting guys outside of maybe right now Will Wagner, who I am ex- just ecstatic to watch play baseball. Joey Lopervito, you know, just striking out uh, every other at-bat, but, you know, the other at-bats are uh, kind of awesome, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, sure, Joey Lopervito. I mean, hey, it's fine, whatever. No comment on that one from me, but uh, the rest of the guys I, I really do enjoy. Um, and, and it's fun. It's fun to watch these guys. You got to find your sort of J- blue Jays enjoyment somewhere. I mean, we could, could come on here and, and yell and scream it 
at the uh, you know the camera for a while. But at the end of the day, you know we we still love baseball. We still watch the Blue Jays. We still love the Blue Jays, and and we're going to continue to watch. So and and bring you guys hopefully the most up to date information, uh, news, uh, our opinions as much as you guys take them or leave them. I mean they're there. You can tell us we're idiots. You can tell us uh, that, oh. Braden, that was a great idea. I'd love to hear that sometimes, too, if you ever want to say that. But anyway, guys, we're going to get out of here. Uh, it's been uh, a, a bit of a week for us. So um, we're going to continue to grind it out. We got some cool episodes, as I said before. Make sure you guys tune in the rest of the week. And, uh, yeah, take it easy.